Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 56 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Alrighty, later on in this video, we're going to have a great episode of Hogg's Headlines. But first, we're going to hear from our friend and contributor, Jason Meadows. As you probably know, Jason is the creator and proprietor of Knuckle Supper Studios, and in today's video, he talks about how his comics universe, Nerosville, came into being. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Knuckle Supper Studios Presents. This is Happy Jack, and I will serve as your humble narrator as over the next few weeks I catalog the journey leading up to and through my very first Indiegogo campaign. I will tell you my thought process as I trek through these unfamiliar grounds, sharing with you my successes, missteps, and flat out mistakes. Hopefully, this will help other indie creators as they dive into the unsure world of crowdfunding. Chapter 2, A Universe is Born Lucky for me, I grew up living a clean, all-American life. I started my first job at 13 at a local comic shop, after that, I ended up working at a local farmer's market, picking berries. And as soon as I turned 16, I got a job at a grocery store. So I always had money allowing me to feed my only addiction, comic books. I wasn't one of those teenagers that ran around, partied a lot, and blew my money on random shit that I wouldn't care about in a few months. Nope, my money went straight to the comic store. As a freshman in high school, I saw this kid in my class that draw Nightcrawler on his book cover. The kid was super shy and never spoke, but I loved his art style, so I started up a conversation one day. It grew into a friendship, and through him, I met his best friend who also liked comics, and read actual books. Honestly, who does that for fun in high school? Both of them for name Sean. So, due to his long hair, artist Sean became hippie. My best friend Dave read comics a little, but wasn't a real fanboy. I now had a group of fellow comic fans as friends. These were the best times of my life. We'd go to the comic store together every week. We'd discuss different titles and recommend books to each other. I found my people. Hippie was and is a better artist than me. I realized quickly and accepted it. It was good for me. I was always the best artist in my elementary school and middle school, so meeting Hippie drove me to up my game. Over the next couple years in high school, Hippie and I would work on things together. He'd pencil stuff and I would try to refine my inking. We would design characters together and come up with ideas. And we would dream of someday working for Marvel and living in New York City. Our senior year, Sean, Hippie, and I decided to make up a comic book. With Sean as the writer, Hippie on pencils, and myself doing inks, we were going to make something that was awesome. Aside from a few general story outlines and character designs and pinups, the project never actually went anywhere. But whatever, we had time, right? Cute girlfriend, great family, amazing friends, I loved my life. My late father had always told me he'd pay to send me to any college I wanted to go to. The only school I had any interest in was the Cooper School, but since it offered no backup outside of comics, my dad wasn't having it, so I decided not to go to college at all. Hippie and I had planned on moving to New York City, getting an apartment, and getting a job at Marvel. How hard could it be? But within a year of graduating, Sean and David both left for boot camp. Hippie settled in with his girlfriend, who was sure I was a bad influence. Honestly, I was. So he wasn't allowed to come out and play with me anymore, because she was sure I was going to lead him into trouble. Honestly, I would have. And my girlfriend and I broke up. I was 19 and alone in the world. My world was gone in a snap. So I threw myself into my 9 to 5 job, made some new friends and discovered the joys of partying and bar fights. I was still collecting comics and was a creator at heart, but chasing liquor and women had taken precedence. And that's how my life continued for the next 4 to 5 years. But one day, while working at a plumbing supply shop, I met a beautiful younger woman who worked for the same company but at another location. We started dating and I introduced her to comic books. She really got into it and started collecting her own titles. We went on road trips to explore new comic shops. And she was content to just chill in bed and read comic books. Times were good again. I was drawing and the floodgate of ideas was open. Then, one day at work, I had a customer looking for an old colder toilet tank in Desert Bloom. When it came to old, odd stuff like this, there was really only one source. AF Supply in New York City. There were two things AF was known for. A. Having old, out-of-production product. And B. Being extremely rude. So I made the call that day and before I could even finish my sentence, he interrupted me with an abrupt NO. I was in a bad mood and sick of this guy talking to us this way. So I decided to take a shot at him. Before he had a chance to hang up on me, I started to say, Okay, well thank you for, and mid-sentence he starts to say no problem. But I'm on a roll, so I finished my thought. Okay, well thank you for your help there, Happy Jack. 
the guy yelled asshole and slammed the receiver down. I was pretty ticked with myself and as the day went on I couldn't stop thinking about that name, Happy Jack. I just really liked the way it sounded. And no, I wasn't familiar with the Who song at that point. Sitting at my desk I was amused envisioning how aggravating it would be for a supervillain to have some superhero in a goofy smiley mask cracking wise while kicking his ass. That weekend, while my girlfriend and I were chilling, her reading comic books and me doodling, I remembered the name and sketched out the very first incarnation of what would become Happy Jack. From that first sketch, I felt a connection to that character, and the story ideas just flowed. But even then, as much as I loved Happy Jack, I knew myself well enough to know that I would not only grow bored writing Happy Jack, but also, he wouldn't work in all stories. I mean, you couldn't just replace Spidey with Man-Thing in Craven's Last Hunt. So how do you do an ongoing title with no singular star? Around that time, Image Comics launched Astro City. I picked it up and I loved it. I realized it was exactly the format I'd been looking for. So, what do I name the book? What cool name could I come up with for this town with the highest population of superheroes in the world? I kicked it around for weeks. Nothing. Then one day, I had this vision of riding a Greyhound bus into the city and there was one of those big welcome to signs as you enter the city limits. It read, Welcome to Nerosville, but someone had spray painted an H over the end, so it read, Welcome to Heroesville. Boom, right there I had the book title and the direction. Nerosville was born. A few months later, that girlfriend and I split up. She was younger than me, I was ready to settle down, and she wanted to explore the world, so she accepted a job offer in Denver, Colorado. Alone again, I started working on what I had planned to be the first issue of the book. It was 1998, but around that time, I was reunited with Hippie, and he had an idea for a book. He's an amazing artist, but with me being the writer, I put TFM on the back burner to flesh out his idea. We founded Lead Slinger Studios in 1999 and published two issues of Revelations, an issue of Project Reborn, and two issues of Tales from Nerozville. Now, bear in mind, this was before the days of crowdfunding, so every penny for printing books, con tables, and hotels came right out of my pocket. Sure, the cons were fun, meeting fans and meeting creators that I grew up reading was exciting. Hanging out in hotel bars, pounding Jamesons with dozens of other indie creators were some of the best times I've had in my life. But it was pretty clear that Ledslinger Studios was a losing endeavor, and within 10 years, it was belly up. By this time, I'd been married, had a daughter, and gotten divorced. I had 50% custody of my daughter, so my time was taken up a lot. And I'd also been completely burnt out on the plumbing industry. I'd walk away from making 60 grand a year to be a bank teller, making 24 grand a year. Things were tight. Making comics was not in the works. But a creative person can't just not create. It's as essential as breathing. It's not a hobby. It's a vital part of life. It's part of our DNA. For me, it's therapy. It keeps me level and centered. To paraphrase, it keeps me from choking assholes to death. So I kept creating, plugging away, coming up with story ideas, fleshing out scripts, hiring artists to draw books for me when I could afford it. My hope was someday make enough money to self-publish. Or hit the Powerball, that would work too. A few years later, I started hearing about this Kickstarter thing, and an ink creator that lives in my hometown has had a handful of successful campaigns, so I started thinking this might be an option for me. Unfortunately, I still wasn't at a place in my life to make a go of it. Now, 20 years after publishing my first comic, I decided it was time. I'm friends with and follow guys on social media who were using Indiegogo due to a flexible goal option. What the hell, let's take a look. I went through the files on my computer and realized I had five full issues completely done in addition to multiple short stories. I had over 140 pages of completed work. For a couple months, I kept kicking it around, always finding a reason not to launch. In a moment of self-reflection, I realized what was truly holding me back was a fear of failure. Screw that, my daddy didn't raise a coward. I'm launching this thing, and I'm launching it now. That's the end of chapter 2, and a very brief history of what led me to this point. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritty and explore why I'm making this video series. Tune in next week for my road to Indiegogo chapter 3, Tales from Nerozville is live on Indiegogo. <laughs>
It could mean boys, or if you're modern, hip, it means people. At first glance, guys seems inviting, friendly, maybe warm, even comedic at times. But it, like many male default terms, should not be normalized as an all-encompassing phrase. Innocent as it may I gotta tell you, I like being lectured to by someone who looks like she is barely old enough to, to enter a bar legally. I mean, as a, as a middle-aged guy, uh, there, I, I think there are few things more enjoyable than someone giving me the benefit of her inexperience. While we may understand the word means no real harm, with a deeper look, you'll understand that we've been ignoring the cognitive impact on women as well as gender non-conforming folks by only explicitly addressing the male identifying individuals present. For decades, we have set a standard of only addressing the men in the room. Hmm, I guess this greeting was all in my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Leonard Cohen. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're not a bad feminist if you're comfortable with using the phrase, guys. Oh, thank God. I was so worried about that. What a relief. There are larger issues that we, the feminists, need to combat. Reproductive rights, rape culture, violence against women, LGBTQ rights, and the general reprogramming of most people's minds when it comes to the valuation of women in society. Shall I tell you why we brought you here? To cure you. To make you sane. So what can you do? Substitute one hey guys with a simple good morning everyone. Hi y'all, folks, everybody, scholars, team if you're at work, campers if you're in the forest, bay hive because it's always appropriate. You can also just find ways to insert people's names and address everyone present. And when in doubt, say nothing at all. Hey. Works. Okay, let me give it a shot. Jeff Van Zandt, who's live out at SeaTac with reaction from Flyers. Jeff? <laughs> yeah, guys, 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 yeah, good morning, guys, yeah, guys, yeah, guys. Wow, that's harder than I thought. I challenge you to take an extra 0.5 seconds to think about what comes out of your mouth before you say it. Somewhere along the way, hey, you may slip a guy out or two, but thank you in advance for trying. All right, all right. Let me try again. Yeah, guys. 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 Yeah, good morning, guys. Yeah, 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 guys. I have fallen into a pattern. Guys, back to you. Jeez, I must have really been brainwashed by the patriarchy. Face it, the things we do and say matter. So if you do nothing else, repeat after me. I am powerful. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Nothing. You can count on it. Subscribing to your channel will pay dividends for a long time to come. Alrighty, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day.